It's like simulated radar, but it's really all up in Western North Carolina. It's not impacting the rest of the Carolinas. And then right here, right here, this is late Friday night. It starts to bring this moisture in, Frank, that if I could advance it a little bit further, seems to be the cusp of where the game starts. Well, sort of. Uh, what you're seeing there is is part one of what happens this weekend, mm -hmm. which is another cold front moving in. Uh, delivering a reinforcing shot of cold air. It's not quite cold enough for snow with that over most of the Carolinas, the mountains being the exception. Yeah. Possibly a small sliver of upstate South Carolina too, uh, but just the mountains. Uh, basically for the few people who live along and north of, of Highway 14 there, uh, north of the Greenville-Spartanburg area. Uh, in upstate South Carolina. That's where you have a chance of seeing some snow. You have it actually stick on the ground, you'd have to be in a high spot for that. Uh, but that's what's going on there. It's just not cold enough for snow over most of the Carolinas as that cold front moves through. There's also not a lot of moisture associated with it. You can see there's yeah. there's a blob there. There's not a whole lot of precipitation going on as that cold front moves in. So yeah. the, the, NAM, the NAM nest. I got the NAM uh, here. Right, and the NAM, uh, uh, caveat for the NAM, it, one of its biases, you mentioned that computer models have mm -hmm. biases. One of its biases is that it tends to produce less precipitation which you'll what? see when we go to the next one. Right. <laughs> but, but so the NAM's picking up here at about, let me do again. So Friday, uh, do, 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 Friday, we, so we left off about here, I think it was. You can see that it actually has, like you said, less moisture than the her, the same time frame. Right. Uh, as we head Friday into into Saturday, it keeps us relatively dry, and we're still kind of waiting for the NAM to go further out into the future too. I guess I could go back a few runs, but this this is this current run is still downloading. Right. Now, if you want to you want to switch to the other one, the the the, the NAM nest there, the, NAMS, uh, the, the three the kilometer NAMS? NAM is, is okay. What we often oh, so call like, that. Okay, so we and, get we and that get does go out a little further, there. but uh, and it also tends to do a little bit better with with precipitation than than the full grid NAM we call it. So, so this is about that's that same time for this is late Friday yeah. night, early Saturday morning, right? Right. Yeah, that's uh, 1 a.m. Saturday you're looking at there. So it's yeah. uh, kind of the middle of the night, Friday night there. and shows that precipitation just moving in. I guess that that yeah, model is knocking on the that's door. That's an older run, I guess. It must be the 18Z run. Or, it and, is the 18Z run. Okay. And for anybody who's wondering why we keep saying numbers and then Z, Z is like Zulu time. It's the equivalent of GMT, but worldwide. So all the weather stuff, like when it says in the top right of this picture, 6Z, that's why Frank said that's actually 1 a.m. Right. Yeah, that's the explanation. Uh, for for this Z time thing, the models are are based on uh, based on Z time, and and that's that, that's the name of the time zone. Uh, yeah. There's actually every time zone around the world is assigned a letter. Uh, the 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 Z time zone is well known because that's where the prime meridian is, uh, and that's where we base all of the times, the initialization times for our monitor, the time at which we take all those from which all we take those weather observations and and stick them into the computer and say here run your equations and tell me what the weather's going to do. So let's uh, let's get these good people uh, the snow lovers run. The the computer model that is just pro snow love is the GFS and this is the 18Z run that came out a few hours ago here on this Wednesday night. And uh, what the heck is that, Frank? It, it's actually consistent for two runs in a row. I'm impressed. Oh, I like consistency. Let's give, the, let's give the GFS a small gold star for having uh, or some, what, something of run-to-run -run consistency here. So <laughs> I'm not uh, this saying is... I think it's going to be right. I'm just no. saying I want to give it a little gold star for yeah. not going, for not bouncing around between the 12 and 18 Z runs. For right, because every couple hours when it generates a new one, if it does the same thing again and again and again and again, consistency is something. So this is 12 Z on Sunday, Frank. So Correct. when is that Sunday. for people? 10 a.m. on Sunday. So this is like church time on Sunday. Oh, no, 7 a.m. 7 a.m. Well, maybe well, church time church. for some. Oh, some people do go to church really early, but I just my, apparently the hand command for seven also zooms out my camera. <laughs> so uh, why might this happen and why might this not? happen? OK, well, again, there's more than one computer model out there. The GFS, which is run by the National Center for Atmospheric Posi Prediction in Silver Spring, Maryland, a part of NOAA, the National Weather Service, uh, that this GFS model it uses one set of equations and it runs at a certain resolution. That is to say, the, the resolution being the distance between points in the model's grid. Uh, so it, it it's it has one way of doing things, and then you have another model run by the Canadians, uh, what used to be called Environment Canada. I don't know what they changed it. I call it some some long name that I I don't know why they had to change it. But anyway, uh, Canada the Canadians they have their own set of equations they use uh, to take that 
weather observation data, run a bunch of math on it through a different set of equations to come up with a forecast. The European Center for Medium Range Forecasts, creators of our favorite model, the Euro, we call it. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they call it uh, the integrative forecast system or something like that, I guess. But, uh, but we call it the Euro because it's run by the European Center. Anyway, sure. again, different set of equations, uh, higher resolution, less space in between grid points. So uh, you get a different output from that model than you do from the Canadian model than you do from the GFS. Sometimes it's a huge difference. Sometimes it's a small difference. So is the GFS the European right model, or is the GFS wrong? I don't know. To be honest with you, I don't know. Well, let me rephrase that. The GFS is wrong. The Canadian model is also wrong, and so is the European model right now. Oh, UK, but they're all it's wrong. wrong. Chinese model, they've got a model too. It's wrong. Korean's got a model. It's wrong too. All models are wrong. Uh, somebody said all models are wrong, but some are useful. All of them are useful in that they each show us a different possibility of what might happen. Um, the GFS, using its the equations that it's programmed to use by the people in Silver Spring, Maryland, they take that computer model is saying there will be a good bit of moisture, more moisture involved than the other models. They're saying that there will be a, a we'll call it a more dynamic situation, weather speak for saying there's going to be a, a more intense system here. Uh, with more upward motion occurring, and as a result, more precipitation occurs. The timing's a little different than the other models, too. Now, we see what the GFS is calling for. Show them what the Canadian model's showing. That would be the GEFS you see up there. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. That's, no, that's the, I'm sorry, I had it wrong. That, the GEM RDPS is what you want. Or no, the GEM GDPS, that's the one you want. Are you just saying the, the chicken noodle thing. soup at me? Feels yeah, like. just meteorology is a bunch of alphabet soup. It's hard yeah. to get used okay, to. Okay, so I only have I only have the whole United States for the gem G D. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, we we will get the point. Yeah, so it's showing for audio listeners outside of outside of the mountains. It's showing it's showing nothing? almost nothing happening. Almost nothing? dry. A little bit of rain along our coast. No snow, just a little bit of rain. Yeah, although it's a very close call, it, it might end up being. If the Canadian model were right about everything else, might end up being snow. Right, because if you're watching along with us, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Frank, but this purple line right here that divides the blue from the red, that's that's the freezing mark, right? No, no. That, that is your 5,400 meter, 1,000 to 500 millibar thickness line, and that is going to take a minute to explain what that is. Okay, we'll come um, back to that. <laughs> maybe we should come back to that. But anyway, it is one of your rain-snow indicators. Okay. Uh, 